you think he broke that propeller of his. Uh-huh, wasn't it, though? What puzzles me is how you can break a propeller like that with a bottle of champagne. It wasn't easy, but, but it helps if you dump out the champagne and uh, fill the bottle with sand. Now, from KITV4, Island News, this is Good Morning Hawaii. Right now on Good Morning Hawaii, not a first for the suspect behind the Pacific Palisades standoff. Plus, the alleged lucky strike gunman says he can't afford his million dollar bail. Now, his attorney filing a motion to try and give the murder suspect a chance at supervised release before trial. And life sentences for two people who beat a Kona Hotel security guard. And a closer look this morning into Thursday's more than 15 hour long standoff in Pearl City. New video shows what appears to be a Honolulu police officer taking aim at the suspect who barricaded himself inside a house in Pacific Palisades. Good morning, Hawaii. I'm Tom George. After he surrendered just past midnight, he was arrested but has not yet been charged. And I'm Annalisa Burgos. But now that he's been arrested, 51-year-old Wayman Kawa faces two counts of attempted murder and possible firearms violations. The incident started at 9 a.m. on Thursday, apparently over an argument. Police say they saw Kawa with a gun, but he refused to put it down and instead pointed it at an officer who fired back. The barricade forced residents out of their homes until after midnight on Friday when special service officers deployed tear gas into Kawa's home. Kawa was later treated for a gunshot wound sustained during a shootout with HPD. Now, this was not Kawa's first standoff with police. Back in 1998, Kawa held someone hostage in a Pearl City home until he was shot in the chest by police. He was later sentenced to 20 years behind bars for that incident. And even further back in 1990, Kawa was also behind a standoff in Eva Beach, but that one ended peacefully. On Thursday, Thursday KITV4 heard from two brothers who said it was their home that Kawa barricaded himself in back in 1998. It's pretty crazy. It's the same guy, different area that had the um, similar standoff situation. What it kind of draws is that people need help, you know, like uh, it, for this to happen more than once, more than twice is more than one time enough. Now, KITV4 received this photo that was taken in 1998 when the brothers had to seek shelter during that standoff. They also said that they are not related to Kawa. On your crime watch, uh, Honolulu police are looking for a man accused of robbing Territorial Savings Bank in Kaimuki. It happened on Thursday, and police report he flashed a gun at a teller and demanded money. The teller gave him an unknown amount of cash, then took off. The suspect's described to be in his late 50s, 5 foot 8, 6 feet tall, about 180 pounds with short black hair that may have been a wig. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers at 955-8300. Well, 26-year-old man was arrested for allegedly stabbing and killing a 27-year-old man in Waipahu Thursday night. It all happened around 11 o'clock near Kuhaulua and Api'i streets. Police report was started as an argument, ended up as one man dead in, in the hospital and another man possibly facing a second-degree murder charge. 
The attorney of the alleged lucky strike gunman filed a motion for supervised release and reduced bail yesterday. Court documents show 23-year-old Capono Miranda had not could not afford to pay his bail, set at a million dollars. Miranda's accused of shooting and killing 20-year-old Alan Jennings at Alamoana Center last weekend. He's expected back in court next Thursday. All right, so this is this is a first for me in seven years of broadcasting. So Leia's off today, so we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel. I'm doing weather this morning, so bear with me. I have no scientific background, but I have sat next to some of the best throughout throughout the years. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be in fine. News. Tom. All right, so with that being said, we're turning now to your weekend forecast. A live look outside, the beautiful sunrise there out in Honolulu. A nice little 76 degrees as you're waking up this morning. Now today, you see there the winds will be down, not not too crazy out there but the temperatures and showers will be up. But before we get to the forecast, let's check out the current conditions for Honolulu. Again, 76 degrees. Trade winds on the lighter side today and tomorrow. You see there on the radar, nothing too crazy, but uh, we could see a little bit of showers um, in some portions, especially our southerly islands, like the Big Island there. And uh, you look at their high temperatures today. So 79, the maximum in Kaneohe, Honolulu. Really nice out there today if you're trying to get out there. So surfing, pretty calm. Some small kind surf, just about one to three feet out there if you're heading out surfing this morning. So nice day out there for that. So want to give you a look at the forecast. Pretty nice out there, Not a high of 90 for most of the week. Sunday, we could see a little bit of showers coming in on Sunday. For the most part, uh, pretty nice throughout the week. And uh, yeah, it's gonna, gonna be nice for the next eight days. Afternoon highs hovering around 90 for Honolulu, but the winds will pick up after the weekend, but they'll return to normal levels by Monday. So uh, as, as you head into the week, dry, typical trade wind uh, weather pattern expected Tuesday through Friday. So with, with that out of the way, we'll send it back to you, Annalisa. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, Tom. As our viewers know, uh, Lay is expecting, so maybe we'll see you in the future doing more weather. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> All right, speaking uh, about the Hawaii Island, two people who brutally beat a hotel security guard in Kona last year, you may remember that incident, they were sentenced to life in prison. And a warning, some viewers may find this following video disturbing. Natasha Talatasi and Wesley Samoa were given the possibility of parole at their sentencing Thursday. Lama Lauvao, also involved in the attack, was sentenced to 10 years behind bars. The group beat security guard John Kanui at the Kona Seaside Hotel last September after he asked them to turn their music down. Kanui was hospitalized in critical condition. His family released a statement last month saying Kanui was left paralyzed from the chest down. Well, Florence and Gerard Puana were granted a new civil trial against their granddaughter and niece, Catherine Kealoha. A circuit court judge overturned a verdict from a 2015 civil lawsuit where the Puanas sued Kealoha for financial fraud and elder abuse. Now, Kealoha won that case, getting around $600,000, but it opened the doors to the mailbox frame job conspiracy. Kealoha, a former deputy prosecutor along with her husband, Louis, the former police chief in Honolulu, and two HPD officers were convicted in that case earlier this year. The judge said there was enough new information to overturn the verdict, but whether or not the Puanas have to pay the $658,000 owed still needs to be determined. The American Civil Liberties Union believes too many people are incarcerated in Hawaii who aren't even convicted yet. A new report by the ACLU shows more than 5,600 people were behind bars in 2017 and dating back to 1980. Now that's an increase of almost 500% but the ACLU has recommendations to lower the population, like drug abuse programs, mental health care, and shortening pretrial detention. Some of these issues are public health issues, right? They're not uh, public safety. They're not, uh, we shouldn't be just locking people up. We should address the root of the problem. And it's public, it's, uh, it's health. Overcrowding is another big issue in the report, showing about 1,500 inmates sent to private facilities in Arizona in 2017. A spokesperson for the State Department of Public Safety says they welcome any initiative that helps reduce the population while maintaining the community's safety and security.
Well, if you were driving by the Hawaii State Capitol building yesterday, you might have noticed this. The American flag was flying upside down. Now, the sergeant of arms told KITV4 that it was a mistake, and they say it was corrected as soon as it was noticed. That's disturbing, I would say, because uh, it does mean a symbol of distress does when it? you fly the flag upside down. Um, and it's ironic considering what's happening with all the issues at Mauna Kea. Absolutely, but people, but people have good eyes, though, to call that in and, and notice yeah. it. So. But the, to be fair, the government employees have said that that was a mistake. Absolutely, and it would not yes. meant to make any kind of statement. Absolutely. So. so just to clear that up. Yes, yeah. that's right. All right. Well, the time is 6.09 a.m. on this Saturday morning. Your morning shakas are coming up. And we're going to be acknowledging young climate activists across the world. Yeah, making a difference. Plus, get those creative juices flowing for National Live Creative Day. We'll explain what that is. Stay with us coming up. You're watching Good Morning Hawaii. Time now, 6.09. We'll be right back. the UPS store. Yeah. We printed that sign. I thought you just did shipping. Oh, no. We do printing, packing, notarizing, faxing, mm. shredding, mailboxing, mm -hmm. taping, laminating, consulting, grading, designing, returning, and of course, shipping. <laughs> I can't feel my legs. From printing to packing to mailboxing, go to the UPS store for every ink your small business needs. And of course, shipping. Need printing? We have just the ink for you. To find one of 21 locations in Hawaii, visit the upsstore.com. I'm oh, have me a little nap. And go over to Thelma Lewis and watch a little TV. If you like that plan, try MASH. What next? Then the Andy Griffith Show. All part of my master Digital plan. Digital Channel 12.2. Spectrum Cable Channel 995. The guaranteed lifetime care was one of the most important factors for our decision in coming here. We like the idea of being in the same building together forever. <laughs> Had we remained at home, we would not have been involved in it as many activities. Well, I never was interested in taking photographs up until I joined the photography club. There was just a special warmth and friendliness and welcoming energy that made us really feel like we were at home. It's wonderful. Hawaii small businesses work hard for their customers. Chocolea is a gourmet chocolate company in Manoa. They specialize in creating dark chocolate truffles and other treats. In the heart of Aiea lies Sumida Farms. This family farm has existed since 1928 through determination and hard work. Aloha Dry Cleaners and Laundry has operated for over 20 years. With three locations, they are proud to service Oahu. As Small Business Lender of the Year, CPB supports local businesses and all they do for our economy. It's another way Central Pacific Bank is going beyond for you. Looking for better family health, wellness, and savings? HawaiiSavingsClub.com offers daily deals on Johnson & Johnson products. Don't get stuck paying full price and don't get stuck in traffic. Visit KITB.com before you get on the road. Welcome back. It's time for our morning shakas. Today, we're going to be recognizing a 16-year-old climate activist from Sweden who's rallying young people outside of the White House to fight for the survival of our planet. Let's go! No more oil! Keep that carbon in the soil! That's Greta Thunberg there. She's attracting major attention for inspiring students around the world to take a stand. Thousands are on strike to demand action from political leaders. The rallying comes just as the Environmental Protection Agency announced rollbacks for an Obama-era rule that protected rivers and wetlands. The Clean Waters Act, which didn't give you clean waters. By the way, today we have the cleanest air, we have the cleanest water that we've ever had in the history of our country. Right? Now, according to an ABC News Washington Post poll, more than half of those who answered say they do not approve of how President Trump is handling the issue of climate change. Next week, Thunberg will take her fight to Capitol Hill and meet with lawmakers. The United Nations Climate Summit and Global Climate Strike also kicks off 
next Friday. Great to see the next generation stepping up and, and showing leadership. For That's sure. right. Very amazing. Uh, meantime, students in Hawaii will join millions around the world in organizing their own climate strike. A march and rally are set for next Friday from Washington Place to the state capitol, then Honolulu Hale. Students on Maui will strike at the University of Hawaii campus in Kahului. On Hawaii Island, sign waving will be set up along Bayfront Highway near the King Kamehameha statue downtown. And students on the Garden Isle will meet at Kauai Community College. And for more information on times and locations, head to our website, kitv.com. All right, as part of National Child Passenger Safety Week, Hawaii Island police are stepping up enforcement efforts next week. That's an important issue. Officers will be checking to make sure keiki are properly secured in car seats and in a car seat appropriate for their age and size. If kids are not properly secured, drivers face a first-time offense of $100 and will be required to attend a car seat safety class. If you need any help finding the right car seat or the proper way to use it, you can stop by a local police or fire station. All right, well, time to let your imaginations run wild because today is National Live Creative Day. Unleash your inner child, create your masterpiece, or just get out of your same old routine. Now, even looking at logical problems involving math or computer code in a different way can lead to unexpected results. Many of the world's greatest thinkers have also been some of the most creative, so give yourself permission to join them. Ooh, another excuse to just be creative, right? Oh. Absolutely. Yeah, we have a very creative job, too. Here with the news. <laughs> Our time now is 6.15, another Friday of high school football across the islands. And Cody Krupp will have the Blitz coming up in sports. Highlights and final scores coming your way. Stay with us. You're watching Good Morning Hawaii. Service is my cut in law. Imua, you hope it to and from your heart. Our big on a discount service is for sure. Hai nai, a my kapuana ea. Kawaii kaholo in the cab. We thank you to and from the airport with big discount. Go dial for to do to do to do the cab. So, what's the end things in eggs and things? Celebrating over 45 years in Hawaii. They use only 100% fresh local eggs, 100% local beef, and 100% fresh locally caught fish. Rediscover Hawaii's original all day breakfast and things at Eggs and Things. My cholesterol was going up, my blood pressures were going up, and my weight was going up and I didn't know what to do but my doctor said to consider the Akahi Ornish program and after the nine weeks my weight was down now a total of 45 pounds my blood pressures are normal and my cholesterol is still normal I feel better than I have in 20 years For many of us, aging in place in your own home just won't be possible. But where to go? A big brand name elder care facility? Or one of the small care homes scattered throughout our neighborhoods? What about Kinaole Estate? Kinaole is a little different. It's not exactly big, but it's not just someone's house either. For those who've made the choice, it's just right. Find your best fit. Kinaole Estate in Windward, Oahu. Catch Island Sports with Brandi Higa, weeknights at 6 and 10 on KITV4. Welcome back. Well, less than two weeks after Hurricane Dorian devastated the Bahamas, a new storm now headed their way. This is Tropical Storm Umberto, and it strengthened yesterday and is expected to turn into a hurricane in the coming days. Now, residents in the Bahamas are already being warned to prepare for heavy winds and rain. The storm looks like it'll hit parts of Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina this weekend. And switching gears back here at home, today the winds will be down, but temperatures and showers will be up. But before we get to the forecast, we want to check out our current conditions for Honolulu, where it is 76 degrees right now. 
Now, uh, the winds will be on the lighter side uh, today and tomorrow. You can expect the easterly trades of 5 to 15 miles per hour with even more southeasterly winds for the Big Islands. Those easterly winds will be sending in some morning showers to windward and Malka spots, especially for the southerly islands, but we'll be seeing some more showers over the leeward side later in the day. You can expect scattered clouds tonight throughout the day, especially for windward sides in the morning, but by the afternoon, leeward sides will get a little bit more clouds as the sea breezes push in the moisture from the ocean. Going to be a warm day today. Afternoon highs reaching the upper 80s for the windward sides into the low 90s for some of the hotter spots. Yesterday, though, Kapolei hitting 92 degrees. It's been pretty rough out there. So for those heading to the beach, the surf is going to be small, but the conditions are going to be nice if you want to hop in the water. The winds will be pretty light out there. The big waves rolling into the southern shores where the surf will be two to four feet. Temperatures remain up over the next couple days. As you see right here, looking pretty good going to be in the 90s all week. The only the only problem spot you see there probably the next couple days is going to be a little bit uh, of showers coming in uh, on Sunday. But Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday going to be pretty hot and a little bit windy. So uh, that's it for your forecast. Cody Krupp next with sports. Well, the season flying by before our eyes. Another Friday of high school football, and we had some good football games. And as my man Brett Favre would say when he got down on our center, Green 19! Green 19 set! Blue for the egg! Blue for the egg set! Let's get to the blitz. So how about the Iolani Raiders, fresh off giving their head coach, Wendell Lucas, 200 win last week, 201, sure look good, is taking out last year's D1 champ by Pahu. What a throw this was, Jonah Chong, have another look as Coach Look, gotta love it, post fade to Koei Chikawa. So six nothing Raiders and everything going right. Special teams, that was Shane Molina putting his big paws on it. That set up Brody Logan back to Lena. He could have ballerina that football into the end zone. So you got some offense, some special teams, and why not add the defense to the mix? The black shirt swarming. It was Becky Pay holding them up. Micah Kamat, who popped it loose, and Isaac Ignacio the scoop. So Elani in business once again. And well, they scored again to make it 20-0. That defense hungry for more. It was tipped and into the arms of the big fella, Lima Hart Bottle. Yeah, I would say keep that football. That is one that you're probably never gonna get a chance at again. So Elani against last year's D1 champs. 48-14, they get the victory in Aloha Stadium. So this is the game of the night right here. Action sizzling between 4-1 and one Lele Hua and undefeated on Bean Damien. So tied 14-14 of the half and Kiko turn again, turn left and found his guy Jason Ramos. So the mules go up, but the Monarchs, they are going down without a fight. What a game this was. Periamo Sulu getting loose down the sidelines. That's going to set up Damien nicely right here in scoring territory. So from five yards out, River, Yaia punching it in, but they were down to eight points in the final seconds. They had the ball at the two-yard line. They had two chances to score, and they couldn't do it. So Leve Hua knocks off that unbeaten game in a final of 34-26 and a good one. So back to Aloha Stadium we go. It was an earlier game where they were rumbling Division II, undefeated Roosevelt, putting that on the line against Pac-5, and never really in jeopardy. Sky Ogata to chase Akana from the one, and then the touchdown number one for Micah Kukahiva. So 7 off the Rough Riders, and it's a little bit of a longer run, but same type of run, and it's same results. Turn and burning, and it is a Roosevelt touchdown finish with three touchdowns. He leads all Division II, and while well, they gave up one Pac-5 TD late in the final minutes, but they tied a school record with 13 straight shutout quarters before that. The Rough Riders stay unbeaten 21-6. We spoke with her prior to the match. Was optimistic. No fracture is really the only factual thing we have. Well, there's the update on Rainbow Wahine volleyball star Jolie Rasmussen suffered an ankle injury in a Thursday win over West Virginia. So without her on Friday against Utah Valley, but held off a late charge in the first set, 25-20, and then coming from behind in set two, they trailed 17-20, but eight straight points for the Rainbow Wahine. They pulled it out 25-20, and yeah, they couldn't take the broom out of the maintenance closet. There wasn't a sweep as Utah Valley roared in set three, 25-20, but then UH shot up the door. It was a low ball four set, and you can keep that Rainbow Warriors record undefeated. 25-15 last set is 17 kills from freshman Hata Helvig to go with 17 digs. That ain't too shabby. The kids, they were just excited to have cheerleaders. They knew we were cheerleaders. You know, they got to play with my pom-poms. 
always good seeing the kids smile and like enjoying themselves when they see like strangers and making them feel comfortable. So today it is time for some football between Rainbow Warriors and the Washington Huskies. But yesterday it was about giving a little time to the Seattle Children's Hospital. It was part of the Hawaii Tourism Authority and the Hawaii cheerleaders teaming up with the Husky cheerleaders. Spent time with Keiki there in Seattle. There was music, arts and crafts, a hula performance. And, well, that kickoff scheduled for 1.30 today. Are the Bulls going to stay 3-0 or go to 3-0? We're going to have to wait and see. We'll have more later today in sports. But that's it for sports for now right here on KFB4. When you've been in an accident, the last thing you need to worry about is where to get your car repaired. So look no further than the top of the list and trust the first name in quality auto repairs, IAEA Collision Center. We work with your insurance company to take care of all your repair needs so you don't spend any extra time without your car. Great customer service, quality repairs, quick turnaround, and a warranty for your repairs. IAEA Collision Center, conveniently located in Kalihi on Kahai Street and on Kalani Street. Oh, Hawaii Cell Storage. Ay, na, na, la, lo, di, na, na, iwa. Oh, Hawaii Cell Storage. Box them, pack them, score them, lock them, iwa. Hey, li, lo, lo, ti, Look, I'm sorry. I think it's time we move on. It's 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 not you. It's it's just time. It's time for both of us. I think it's time for both of us to move on. I'm gonna miss you, baby. You're gonna give somebody else so much. You have a lot to offer. And you're gonna be a lifesaver. Auntie, how did you do in the storm last night? My jealousies leaked water everywhere. We had no water leakage at all. I'm so glad we installed Breezeway louver windows. They not only seal tightly, but they prevent the traffic noise from keeping us up at night. We shouldn't be replacing jealousies for a really long time. See how awesome they sealed up? Contact Breezeway today to replace your old jealousy windows. For local breaking news, Watch Brenton Awa and Mika Miyashima every weekday at 6 and 10 p.m. Only on KITV4 Island News. This is Good Morning Hawaii. Welcome back. Time now, 626. And if you're looking for some family-friendly fun this weekend, KITV4's Tasia Worley has some ideas. Are you guys walking like men? Kick off your Saturday and walk like mad. The morning walk hosted by Mothers Against Drunk Driving aims to increase road safety. The annual 5K fundraiser begins at the Alamoana Center Macy's at 7 o'clock and ends before 9. Registration is open online. Or head over to Oahu's North Shore for the 7th annual Kalo and Ava Day. Waimea Valley is celebrating the culture and traditions of these crops with cooking workshops, live music, cakey crafts, and more. The free event runs from 8.30 in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Plus, the longest-running Aloha Festival's Ohana event is coming back to Pearl Ridge Center. This year's Kiki Ho'olau Le'a will feature hula halau, arts and crafts, and live music the whole family can enjoy. And it's all going down from 10 to 4 at the mall's Vaimakai Center Court. And if you're on Hawaii Island, you can see old Hawaii on horseback. The Paniolo Preservation Society is working to keep the legacy of the Hawaiian cowboy alive. More than 100 costumed riders will descend on Waimea's Waikiki Ranch Polo Field and relive historic moments in the state's ranching history. Attendees can also enjoy the sweet sounds of Grammy Award winner John Cruz. The celebration runs from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And the second annual Waikiki Fall Fest is happening this Saturday. Attendees will have the chance to check out food, retail, and other local handmade products. The event will shut down Kalakaua Avenue from Seaside to Kapahulu Avenues. Admission is free. It starts at 4 o'clock and ends at 10. 
Those are just a few of the events happening around the islands this weekend. For more details and ideas, check out our website, KITV.com. I'm Tasia Worthy, KITV4 Island News. Have a great weekend. A lot of cool stuff. Thanks, Tasia. And a sci-fi classic also returning to theaters for its 40th anniversary. You can catch the screening of Star Trek The Motion Picture tomorrow and Wednesday. The first big screen mission of the Starship Enterprise will play in more than 600 U.S. theaters. It'll be preceded by a behind-the-scenes documentary short. And here on the islands, the film will be playing at the Regal Dole Cannery, Regal Kapolei Commons, and Regal Maui Mall Megaplex. Are you a Trekkie fan, Tom? Not really. I never, never like, <laughs> what about you? Uh, so what? I did like uh, Patrick Stewart. I thought he was pretty cool. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, did you do the, the, the thing? Well, that, that's the, is that, uh, that's yeah, Star Trek, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not a big Trekkie, but we'd oh. love to hear from our Trekkie fans <laughs> yeah. out there. Uh, the time now, 6.29 a.m. Your top morning headlines coming up. We'll be right back. We've been hearing a lot about rat lungworm disease. But did you know it's not just a rural problem? It can pass from rats to slugs and snails to humans anywhere and is something we should all be concerned about. We can all help right in our own neighborhoods by keeping our yards free from slugs and snails, using traps to catch rats and disposing of them properly, and always washing produce thoroughly and carefully before eating. Let's work together to prevent the spread of rat lungworm disease. What's more painful than finding out your child has cancer? The side effects of chemotherapy on a child's body. Zach was diagnosed with AML, a deadly leukemia, when he was only five. While the treatment really attacked the cancer, unfortunately, it also attacked his body. Uncontrollable fevers, terrible nosebleeds, and his skin was burned from the inside out. He died at just nine years old, really from the treatment that was meant to save him. The Leukemia and Lymphoma Society was founded 70 years ago by parents who also lost their child to cancer. Today, we're pioneering breakthrough treatments for kids with cancer. We are so close to finding better treatments for kids with cancer. So it's too late to save Zach, but working together, we can save thousands of kids just like him. Visit LLS.org to save a child's life. Kamehameha Federal Credit Union is here to support you through life's journey, assisting you with all your financial needs, from buying a new car to purchasing a home, to taking a family vacation, to celebrating life's special events. We're here to lend a hand every step of the way and give you peace of mind so you can concentrate on what's really important. E kokua pakahikako. We help each other. Join our ohana today. Visit us in person at the Kamehameha Shopping Center or online at kamehamehafcu.org. From KITV4, Island News, this is Good Morning Hawaii. Right now in Good Morning Hawaii, the gloves came off at the Democratic debate. Now the candidates vying for the White House back on the campaign trail, hoping to turn their performances into momentum in the race. Plus, six people have now died from illnesses due to vaping and hundreds more have been hospitalized. The White House now stepping in. The new ban they hope will help curb the problem. And as tensions continue over the TMT, the governor claiming some of the rhetoric has gone too far and that some state officials are being cyber bullied. All right, let's take a look now. That's live at the White House as the Democratic candidates hit the campaign trail, hoping to become the nominee to take on the current resident of that home on Pennsylvania Avenue. As Kyra Phillips explains, they're looking to capitalize on any momentum they may have created at the latest debate. I think any Democrat in that stage can beat Donald Trump. This morning, candidates appealing to voters over the number one issue for Democrats, health care. Last night was the closest we came to a debate, okay? We actually had an open debate on health care. I was not pleased that Vice President Biden distorted what Medicare for all is. Biden, the party's early leader, who stayed in Houston, also butting heads with another candidate. Are you forgetting what you said two minutes ago? Are you forgetting already what you said two minutes ago? 
you said just two minutes ago? While greeting students at Texas Southern, Biden's campaign calling that moment a low blow by Castro. I don't view it as anything. I think he's got a sexual. Is he releasing your medical records to address concerns? Yes. By I don't have, what the hell concerns, man? You want to wrestle? <laughs> Other candidates like Kamala Harris, who had memorable quips like this. And now, President Trump, you can go back to watching Fox News. Are just trying to gain traction, like here at this fundraiser in Chicago. We need a new commander in chief. And then there's Beto O'Rourke and this dramatic moment talking about gun control. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15, your AK-47. We're not going to allow it to be used against our fellow Americans anymore. Generating new 2020 swag, while at the same time prompting Texas state lawmaker Briscoe Kane to tweet this apparent threat. My AR is ready for you, Robert Francis. That tweet quickly removed by Twitter. Another move made by both the Biden and Castro campaigns was their email blast. They both mentioned that health care exchange where Castro challenged Biden's memory and in turn, Biden's campaign called it a low blow. They appeared to capitalize on that, mentioning the standout moment in those emails and then added a link to donate to their campaigns at the White House. I'm Kira Phillips, ABC News. And the Justice Department plans to honor the team who helped Brett Kavanaugh make it onto the Supreme Court. The Attorney General's Award for Distinguished Service is the department's second highest award for employee performance. Kavanaugh was confirmed to the U.S. Supreme Court last October despite allegations of sexual misconduct, which he strongly denies. And turning to other news now, the Trump administration made a big announcement yesterday. As Mandy Geither explains, it's aimed at stopping teens from vaping. After officials say a sixth person has died from lung disease related to vaping, yes, sir, the, on it. the Trump administration is taking a step to combat the epidemic. We can't allow people to get sick and we can't have our youth be so affected. Under a new enforcement policy expected in the coming weeks, all flavored e-cigarettes other than tobacco flavor will have to be removed from the shelves. The products would remain off the market unless they become approved by the FDA. Manufacturers of tobacco flavored e-cigarettes would have until May 2020 to file for approval by the FDA, says Alex Azar, the U.S. Secretary of Health and Human Services. What we've seen is the data just shows the kids are getting access to these products in spite of our best efforts at enforcement, at retail enforcement. Earlier this week, the FDA issued letters to leading e-cigarette maker Juul Labs warning the company about illegally marketing its product as a safer alternative to cigarettes. A Juul spokesperson says, we are reviewing the letters and will fully cooperate. The e-cigarette company has maintained its products are intended to convert adult smokers to what it described in the past as a less harmful alternative. I'm Mandy Gaither reporting. And there are at least 450 possible cases of severe lung disease across 33 states. In fact, here in Hawaii, we saw our first hospitalization here as well. And according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, that could be linked to vaping. And that includes six deaths across the country. In a tweet last night, the president struck a different tone on the subject of vaping. The president tweeting out, quote, while I like the vaping alternative to cigarettes, we need to make sure that this alternative is safe for all. Let's get counterfeits off the market and keep young children from vaping, end quote. The Safe Banking Act will go before the House this month. The bill will allow cannabis businesses access to the federal banking system, providing protections for banks that work with marijuana companies since the substance is still illegal under federal law. Several states have uh, legalized, uh, having legalized medical or recreational marijuana in recent years, re resulting in the federal banking issue for cannabis businesses. Well, state officials are calling on the public to help stop the cyberbullying of government employees amid the ongoing tension over Mauna Kea. During the removal of an unauthorized structure on Mauna Kea last week, citizens reacted strongly to the cutting of the Hawaiian flag, prompting a barrage of hate speech and death threats against employees involved in that operation. One post offered a $5,000 bounty for the identity of the officer who cut the flag, while another worker's contact information was live streamed on social media and led to this phone call. Do people who 
suffering and you watch it go down. Fucking clown, I hope he die. Attorney General Claire Connors said her office is investigating all threats and actions involved in the current TMT discourse on both sides. Potential violations include terror threats and extortion. TMT opposition protesters told reporters that they do not support calls for violence, but asked law enforcement officials to be more mindful of insensitive acts like cutting the flag. It was the irresponsible behavior of law enforcement that generated all this pilikil. They need to take some responsibility and accountability for that decision, and they should provide training for their officers to not do that kind of stuff. And for continuing coverage on the tension over TMT, visit our website, KITV.com. You can also download our free KITV4 mobile app. All right, switching gears now to weather. This is a live look, a beautiful sunrise over Waikiki Beach. So again, as we mentioned, uh, lay off this morning. So uh, they had to go to the backup plan again. <laughs> I have no background in science, but I have a lot of enthusiasm. I've sat some, next to some of the best uh, meteorologists in the business. So if anything goes wrong, just bl <laughs> blame them, I guess. Um, so now to your forecast, you can see right now in Honolulu, really nice, the sun coming up, 76 degrees right now, uh, humidity 79%, so a little, a little uh, muggy out there, but nice as you're waking up for today on your Saturday morning. Checking out the winds though, not too bad right now, the maximum looks like about 15 miles per hour, so a little bit, a little bit uh, windy on your south shores, but nothing too crazy, a little bit of southeasterly winds as well on the Big Island. You look at the radar right there. Not too much, could see a little bit of showers in some uh, windward and Malka spots though. Uh, your satellite radar, maybe some more showers over the leeward side later in the day. You can expect some uh, sattered clouds throughout the day. High temperatures though, 80 in Kona, that's the maximum. And if you're heading out on the surf, uh, good if you're a beginner, uh, one to three feet, not, nothing too crazy out there if you're heading out for the surf on your Saturday, nothing too crazy out there. And, now for a look at your eight day forecast, pretty nice the next couple days. Again, uh, could be a little bit uh, rainy on your Sunday, some uh, isolated showers uh, for then. Uh, but then uh, heading into the rest of the week, not too, too bad. Gonna be uh, pretty muggy the rest of your week as you're heading out there, but pretty rough there. A uh, high of 90 for most of the week. We'll send it back to you, Annalisa. Well, for the uh, first time, the University of Hawaii at Manoa has restrooms meant for everybody. And reviews on campus are mixed. KITV4's uh, TJ Horgan reports some people believe it's a step in the right direction for inclusivity. And that's why others say they should flush it. When you gotta go, you gotta go. Uh, we all have the right to use the restroom that corresponds to the gender that we identify with, not the sex that was randomly assigned at our birth. UH Manoa opened its first multi-stall all-gender restroom this semester in the Center for Student Services, thanks to a push from the school's LGBTQ center. So some of the students also in this building saw that, you know, you're the center of all things for students on campus, so I think it's time for us to take this leap, and we did. Some students are apprehensive. Um, it's gonna take some time. I mean, I personally, um, wouldn't use them, but like I think it's good for people who, who are kind of comfortable with that kind of thing. And Others say it might take a little getting used to. That's been like a thing that's been implemented in like kids since they were little, like like little boy, don't go in the girls' bathroom. So Most of the students I spoke with today though told me they do see it as a step in the right direction for removing a stigma because ultimately it's not that complicated. I've actually used it and like it, it was just like going to the bathroom. Like everyone will be fine with it and uh, everyone could just do their business and go on their way. Uh, I don't really have many opinions, but I like everyone to be comfortable, so I'm glad that they did that. But for the LGBTQ Center, this signifies much more progress than just a bathroom. I love that we have an inclusive place for everyone uh, with their learning environment and education. TJ Horgan, KITV4 Island News. Well, a drug to prevent a life-threatening allergic reaction... Well, <laughs> All right, there's about 100 single stall general neutral restrooms on campus, and that number is expected to grow because school policy requires all new buildings to have at least one. And at our next story, a, a drug to prevent life-threatening allergic reactions to peanuts in children could soon be on the market. It's called palforzia. It doesn't cure a peanut allergy, but it stops the throat from closing up if a child accidentally eats peanuts. 
The drug got the support of an FDA advisory committee yesterday and will be formally reviewed in January. It is likely to get the green light. A lot of people with peanut allergies out there. Yeah, good news, sir. Uh, the FDA reporting that Zantac may contain a cancer-causing impurity. The drug is used to treat heartburn and acid reflux. An FDA spokesperson told USA Today the discovery isn't prompting a recall, but it's a good idea to switch to another over-the-counter drug. Anyone who takes prescription Zantac should talk to their doctor. And the news back here around the islands, Hawaii commissaries are recalling some of their fresh seafood. Now that includes blue marlin, ahi steaks, and fillets and poke sold after August 15th. Now that seafood may have been contaminated with salmonella, according to the State Department of Defense. The commissaries on Schofield Barracks, Marine Corps Base Hawaii at Kaneohe Bay, and the two commissaries over at Joint Base Pearl Harbor and Hickam are all affected by this. So if you're on the base, the customers can return the products to the store for a full refund. Over on Maui, a restaurant in Kahului forced to close earlier this week after failing its health inspection has been issued a yellow conditional placard. Asian cuisine and sushi passed a follow-up inspection by the Department of Health on Thursday. Now this is video that was taken earlier this week when an inspector found cockroaches crawling on food surfaces as well as rat droppings. The eatery reopened yesterday but will be closed for three days starting Monday for fumigation. Definitely don't want to see that when you're eating. Yeah. No, yeah, but it's a good warning to people if you live in that area. All Absolutely. right, the time now, 6.44 a.m. on your Saturday morning. Coming up, it's jail time for actress Felicity Huffman. How much time is she getting for her role in the controversial college admission scandal? Plus, saying goodbye to a legend. Singer Eddie Money dies at the age of 70. Don't go away. Time now, 6.45. Good morning, Hawaii. We'll be right back. Stay with us. When it comes to Hawaii's favorite plates, nothing beats the delightful dishes at Eggs and Things. Freeze. See what I mean? Whether it's a classic night of beers and lip-smacking burgers, a sweet treat for a first meet, or family style to feed even the craziest of appetites, Eggs and Things has the menu for you. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, even pauhana. Open 6 to 10 p.m. Now extended Friday and Saturdays until midnight. Military and Kama'aina discounts apply, so come in and unwind today. My cholesterol was going up, my blood pressures were going up, and my weight was going up, and I didn't know what to do. But my doctor said to consider the Akahi Ornish program. And after the nine weeks, my weight was down. Now a total of 45 pounds. My blood pressures are normal, and my cholesterol is still normal. I feel better than I have in 20 years. <laughs> Our airport service is my cut in law. Pimua, you hope it to and from your heart. Our big on a discount service is for sure. Hi, Naya, my Kapuana, eh? Kawaii Kaholo in the cab. We thank you to and from the airport with big discount. Go dial for to do to do to do. The right care for the right person at the right time. That is absolutely what Kina Oli Estate is. My husband and I, we just have a peace of mind uh, knowing that grandma is being taken care of. It just brings peace to the family because they're cared for so beautifully. Her room is bright, cheerful, airy. We don't have to call. We can just come in and they always welcome us. It's like being at home. This is an ohana of family style living. Call or visit us online. Kina Ole Estate on the windward side of Oahu. Good morning, Hawaii. Welcome back. Now to the questions that are swirling around embattled NFL star Antonio Brown. Yeah, sources say the New England Patriots' newest player is expected to take the field in Sunday's game. But as Kaylee Hartung explains, this comes amid new allegations and a lawsuit. Antonio Brown taking the practice field, preparing for what could be his first game Sunday with the New England Patriots. This is the NFL investigates allegations of sexual assault against the wide receiver. He remains eligible to play. 
Sources telling ABC News the league has no plans at this time to put him on the commissioner's exempt list. It's paid leave. It's been done in the past. And it's, it's really interesting that the NFL chose not to do this, that Roger Goodell chose not to put him on the commissioner's exempt list. A week of controversy surrounding the pro bowler. His former fitness trainer, Brittany Taylor, filing a civil lawsuit against him, accusing him of sexually assaulting her on at least three separate occasions. Brown, who denies the allegations, appearing to address the claims and the backlash in the social media post. No matter what they say, no matter what they hate, Somebody still got to go to work. The video live streamed oh, from Tom this. Brady's I'm... renowned training facility. It's called TV 12. Let's get it. Brady and keeping quiet. Things that don't involve me, don't involve me. And Patriots head coach Bill Belichick refusing to weigh in. No, I don't comment on that. The loudest rebuke coming from helmet manufacturer Zenith, saying Friday they're dropping their sponsorship of Brown. Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, New York. Well, actress Felicity Huffman will spend two weeks behind bars. She entered a guilty plea to paying $15,000 to a fake charity to rig her daughter's SAT scores. Huffman is one of dozens of college officials, coaches, and parents accused in the scandal. Well, Adele officially calling it quits on her marriage. The 31-year-old Grammy award-winning singer has filed for divorce from her husband. Now, she didn't confirm her marriage until 2017, but the couple's been together for seven years. Following the news, she released a statement saying they are committed to raising their six-year-old son together lovingly. We can expect some sad songs from her. And do not address Sam Smith by the pronouns he or him. The singer took to Instagram yesterday to share his preferred pronouns. He's asking fans to use they or them to avoid accidentally misgendering the artist. Smith identifies as genderqueer and non-binary. People who are genderqueer do not identify themselves as conventionally male or female. Smith first announced they were non-binary during an interview back in March. And some sad news out of the music world. Popular 1970s and 80s singer Eddie Money has died. The 70-year-old produced a string of radio-friendly hits, including Everybody Knows, Two Tickets to Paradise, and Shaken, in a clip for the second season of his reality TV series Real Money. He revealed he had been diagnosed with stage 4 esophageal cancer. Now Money leaves behind his wife and his five children. And you might remember this, Movie Pass. It shut down. The once revolutionary ticketing service offered theater go to goers the ability to see one movie per day for a fee of just 10 bucks a month. But according to a spokesperson, efforts to recapitalize the service have not been successful to date. It's unclear if the shutdown is permanent. All right, turning now to your weekend weather today. The winds expected to be down, but the temperatures and showers will be up. But before we get to the forecast, we want to check out our conditions for Honolulu right now. It is about 76 degrees as you are waking up on your Saturday morning. So uh, going to be pretty nice today and, uh, if you're uh, heading out today. So uh, the trade winds will be on the lighter side for today and tomorrow. You can expect the easterly trades of 5 to 15 miles per hour with even more southeasterly winds for the Big Island. Those easterly winds will send in some morning showers to windward and Malka spots, especially for our southern islands. But we will see some more showers over the leeward sides later in the day. You can expect scattered clouds throughout the day, especially for the windward sides. Now, uh, it is going to be a pretty warm day. Noon highs reaching for the upper 80s for the windward side, the low 90s for some of the hotter spots. Yesterday, though, man, it was pretty rough. Kapolei hitting 92 degrees. And for those heading out to the beach, surf will be small, but the conditions will be nice for being out in the water. As the winds will be pretty light out there. The biggest waves will roll into the southern shores where, we, where the surf will be two to four feet. So nothing too crazy out there if you're an amateur. And the temperatures will remain up over the next eight days. As you see there, the afternoon highs We'll hover around 90 degrees for Honolulu, while the winds will pick up after the weekend, returning, returning to normal levels of 10 to 20 by Monday. But we are definitely going to need those, those trade winds for sure. It has been muggy for sure. Again, as you head out for your eight-day forecast, uh, possible showers on Sunday. But as you head out into the rest of the week, pretty hot out there for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but going to be pretty hot. We'll send it back to you.
All right, thanks, Tom. Well, you may have been a fan of the sitcom Friends. Well, the cast can celebrate an anniversary now that they don't need to feel so glum about. 25 years of their iconic show, one that almost feels as popular as ever. From product placement... No, but this Wonder Broom is amazing! Hey, what are you... <laughs> To memorabilia and even haircuts, Friends has always been a brand that sells. And 25 years on, that hasn't changed. It's still not enough for viewers just to watch the show. They want to live in the world of Monica, Chandler, Ross, Rachel, Phoebe and Joey. And that means eating their food, sitting on their couch and, of course, drinking their coffee. And businesses are taking advantage. Coffee chain Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf jumped at the chance of a tie-up for the anniversary, launching a special edition range of coffee, specialty drinks and memorabilia. Our friends-themed coffee mugs we pre-released and actually sold out in about three hours. They also hosted two pop-up Central Perk events in Los Angeles in August. Those two locations, we saw significant spikes in foot traffic. But more importantly, as a business, it really bolstered system-wide sales. Isn't it cool? It's an apothecary table. <gasps> Pottery Barn also brought back the famous apothecary table, which despite its $1,000 price tag is a top seller in its department, the company says. Must be you know, the antique you properties. You can almost smell the opium. Even Lego is getting in on the action with a $60 replica of Central Perk. Lego says it's one of its fastest selling sets ever. Now, of course, none of these promotions would work nearly as well if Friends hadn't experienced a revival in the age of streaming. Last year, it was Netflix's second most watched show, and the company reportedly paid around $100 million to keep the rights to the show for one more year before it goes on a break, moving to Warner Media's HBO Max streaming service in 2020. It's an iconic show, and ultimately, it's really one of the crown jewels of streaming. Everything changed now with HBO coming in, a major shot across the bow at Netflix, taking friends. And I ultimately believe 2 to 3% of Netflix viewers watch it just because of friends. So for those who say friends and money don't mix... What's more important, your friends or money? Friends! friends. friends. This 25-year-old sitcom still gets the last laugh. <laughs> Claire Sebastian, CNN, New York. I know people who really love that sitcom and others who don't. I guess it just didn't <laughs> feel realistic for people who live in New York because their apartments were just so right. huge for I, what they made. I know. Or it's, <laughs> it's, 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 you know, you have a bunch of 20-somethings and they got, they got a luxury apartment in Manhattan. You know, yeah. that's, probably like, that's probably cost millions of dollars. I, yeah. think, I think there was actually a study. They looked at the actual place where they filmed that. Yeah. I think it was probably like a couple million dollar yeah, uh, it's expensive. condo or something <laughs> out there. Almost as so. expensive as here in Hawaii. <laughs> right. Almost like that. But, but that's, that's, that's why it's a show. It's all, it's all fantasy. Yeah, you know? it's that's not right. Real, but, um, um, winter is coming. I don't know if you're, are you a Game of Thrones fan? Not really, yeah, but this was kind of expected, <laughs> right? A prequel, maybe? Yeah, so HBO isn't saying anything right now, but E! News site Deadline is. It reports that author George R.R. R. Martin is working on a project set roughly 300 years before the series. It would focus on what led to the fall of House Targaryen, known as one of the major ruling families in the popular book and TV series. Well, I don't know. It, uh, people love that series so much so it was inevitable to have a preview. Yeah, well you know we talk about you talk about streaming being so big for uh friends. I you know I would watch it. Everybody says Tom you would love that show, but yeah. the thing is like I don't have HBO. I mean like <laughs> so I mean if it ever comes onto Netflix or Hulu like I'll watch Maybe. it but but it's definitely on my list for That's sure. That's right. Very very good show I've heard as well. All right, the time now 6:56 a.m. Uh you see them all over the islands. They're iconic especially on Aloha Fridays, but now a new exhibit shows the history of the Aloha shirt. Yeah, plus it's your chance to become a star Hawaii. The details on our Island Idol contest. Don't go away. Good morning, Hawaii. We'll be right back. Time now, 6.57. We're at Ohana Hale Marketplace. We're actually Hawaii's largest indoor shopping experience here in Kaka'ako on Ward Avenue. We feature over 200 different vendors locally owned and operated here, offering a unique experience for our shoppers. We have local products, food, services. Very unique, something you won't find at your traditional mall. We have live music, special events going on. So come check us out here at Ohana Hale Marketplace. Oh, check this guy out. Oh my god, it's so cute. What's he wearing? Aww. 
wait, what's going on here? Oh, that guy is pretty cool. And smart, got a Fujitsu and a dog? We love our Fujitsu. We are emergency medical services. We are there for your emergencies. Oahu's 20 EMS units responded to more than 86,000 of your emergencies last year. We are EMS. We are there for your emergencies. Did you know you can make money on RentSell.com, renting or selling anything